Guys, Netflix's live action One Piece was awesome! What's up, YouTubers of the world? Mega Geek Mixer here to give you guys my overall review of One Piece live action Netflix series. Guys, this was a great, great live adaption. It is one of the few out there that when it comes into live action, live action adapted from a game or an anime, it actually succeeded. And trust me, you very get very few out there that are able to succeed. A majority of them fail miserably, if not major if not full on bad to okay and stuff. But this one, this one just knocked it out of the park for me, guys. I felt the One Piece vibes. All the people who were cast as the Straw Hat characters were amazing. They got the characters pretty much all spot on. And I also loved in the fact how for this live action of One Piece, they put in their original content while also adding some in some some scenes in there that are straight from the manga and the anime showing that these people knew what they were doing and also in the fact that it was great they had Ishiro Oda behind the scenes to help them out there now having said that though let me go into the fact on what it is I loved about this as I said the the people who were cast at these characters I only know that the guy who played as Luffy he's been a fan of One Piece for so long that I already was confident he would pull off Luffy great and boy did he ever Ever. The same would go for the younger, ver the guy, the kid who played as the younger version of Luffy. And this can also go for the people who played as Zoro, Nami, Usopp, Sanji, from the from the cast members who play the present one to the to the kids who played as their child versions. They all did a great job in this series. But what I also loved in the fact is, as I said, they had their original content hint in this live action show and. And man, this original content just works for it to the point where you could just tell it fit in with the story, such as in the fact of how the crew came together. Because Luffy in this in the Netflix series, he while he is going to try to form a crew, he wasn't intentionally looking for some of his crew members. Because for some of his crew members, well, mostly when I say that, I'm talking about Zoro. He intentionally in the anime was going to look for Zoro and ask him to join his crew. But in this one, he didn't do that. He wasn't looking to recruit Zoro. It only just happened because he was. He only ended up joining joining Luffy because they were in a situation where they all needed to work together. And that's how exactly the same with Nami. Mind you, he wasn't intentionally looking for Nami in the anime. It's just like Zoro. They were all in a situation where some of them had some similar interests that they crossed paths. And then how you could say that's how the crew was coming to be. Mind you, at the beginning, they were admitting, at least Nami and Zoro were admitting they're not a crew, but they were spending so much time together that it was like, yes, we're a crew especially at the end when it really symbolized it, especially with how how that last scene of them putting their foot on the barrel just like they did in the anime and declaring their dreams to each other as they were ready to set sail for the Grand Line, but also in the fact on how all the time when they got the merry-go, they did not have their pirate flag set up until the very end of the, of the episode. And that right there, guys, is just perfection of, of a formation of a crew in this live action adaption of One Piece by Netflix. And as I say, guys, glad Ishiro Oda was behind all that to help these guys out. And no doubt for some of these, for the cast members, I can't say if they're all One Piece fans or not before they started this. But they all must have did their studies to be right on with their characters. <laughs> But I also haven't said that. I'm going to go into more detail on this live action and the original content that they had in it compared to the anime adaption. And that is in the fact that, unfortunately, some of the characters that were in were in the anime didn't get adapted in here, such as, say, Hachi from the Mer from the Fishman Pirates and a few other things that were left out, all to make it all to make it a swift go through for the East Blue Saga arc, because that's what this series is all about, the East Blue Saga arc. Mind you that they didn't have Low Town until the end, at least more of a sneak peek to the end as a teaser for season two coming forward. But nevertheless, it was 
the original content they put in here was some great stuff here. As I talked about, for one, the organic formation of the crew and how like Luffy, Nami, and Zoro formed their formed the crew by not intentional means of Luffy looking for these two and taking these two as their crew members, but for but circumstances forced them to work together for a while. But even still, though, with some of the original con content we got here, it really gave you a sense of depth in how this crew was forming and how they were all changing by being together. For example, Nami, she already had her view standpoints, which one of them we know, she hates pirates. She just hates them all, no matter what. But hanging out with Luffy changed all that, and it also changed her viewpoint as she met up with some citizens, such as Kaya, and how she viewed rich people, but me meeting with Kaya and forming a bit of a friendship there ha had her have an open mind to d things much different to maybe see things a bit in Luffy's perspective. That right there, that... That change of character in Nami was really being shown to a level unlike any other. And then, of course, there's Zoro. He, he, for one, is called the first mate in this show. Whereas in the anime, he has still not been called that by anyone in the Straw Hats. Whereas she was called that by Usopp and Nami in this, in this series. But, where, but whereas in the anime, it was only outside forces who have ever called Zoro the first mate here. And then his, his time to shine with how his character really is was coming when he show when it was showing in his past about his him and Kawina, you guys all know the story on that one. And then when he faced Mihawk, who, by the way, guy who plays as Mihawk did an amazing job there. But I get, but one of the big aspects that came out of it for him and his character was really showing in depth and in, a, in this live action organic way to how he, at first, was not going to be a part of Luffy's crew, but it's come to a point where after everything they've been through and after all, after getting to know Luffy and what he's done for him, first off, and how Luffy didn't stand in the way of his dream when he fought Mihawk, and how afterwards he swore loyalty, leading into pretty much their own live or OG content and live action style, and how he showed his loyalty to Luffy just after he was defeated by Mihawk, just like in the anime. And then, of course, there's the fact on how some of these villains were worked into it. Now, yes, we eventually ended up Luffy and Buggy meeting each other, but the way it was structured in this is how Arlong was the main antagonist through all of this, like the big bad through it all, because in this one, Buggy was actually... Well, not necessarily say working for Arlong, but he was under Arlong, Arlong's control when Arlong was feeling something, feeling threatened with Luffy's rise already and how he defeated, defeated not just Buggy, but others along the way to really see that he needed to be stopped. And it wasn't just Arlong who was doing that. It was also Garp. Yes, Garp, Luffy's grandfather, who doesn't make an appearance until much later on in the anime and manga of One Piece, it plays a major role in this as he is the Marine chasing Luffy. As Luffy is already out there going on his journey to become a pirate, here's Garp out there chasing him to stop him, all leading to the big finale that after Luffy defeats Arlong and Arlong Park, there's, there's Garp there to finally have that face off after chasing him all throughout the the East Blue Saga series to them finally having their clash together. And if you guys know the anime or through the manga, you know how Garb was desperately trying to make Luffy become a Marine. But no, Luffy had always said he wanted to be a pirate no matter what, and that wasn't going to stop him, all leading to that big finale to show, show that despite how Garb was chasing him, it was all just part of the usual thing that Garb does. What that is, I don't want to tell you guys, because for some of y'all who haven't watched it yet i want you to go see it for yourself but for some of y'all who have watched it you know what i'm talking about never nevertheless that along with kobe you guys remember kobe and hell hell mippo yes from act from Axan Morgan as Helmetpa's son, Kobe being the first person Luffy ever met, they also had their major role to play in this too. And the fact that how after after the whole thing with Axan Morgan, Kobe's not Kobe's not seen in the anime except in except later on after an East Blue arc and after the whole Arlong Park thing. 
or not Arlong Park, is that low town? I can't remember exactly, but you guys know what I'm talking about. It's basically like in the manga with the serial cover and how their journey is, whereas in this one, they play a much bigger role as we get to see their journey and how and how Kobe is growing, growing into being in the Marines and seeing how crazy and messed up the world is to what makes him become the Marine he will be as he's being with Garth. Guys, that along with many other stuff I could say is what made this great. But I just wanted to give you guys my overall thoughts on it. And I'll and I'll be coming back later on to make individual review epi of each episode. Because I'm going to be re-watching this and I'm going to do review of each of the episodes. But this was just an overall review of it. Is it perfect, mind you? No. It has, it has some parts in there that I wasn't exactly fond of. Some of the CGI was okay. Some of the fight scenes were, were most of them were, were really good. Some of them a little clunky. And then the design on the Fishmen, which mind you, that was no doubt going to be the challenging part, was pretty tough. But other than that, though, then again, there's also the fact that, unfortunately, some characters had to be absent. And some of them, I really wanted them to be in there so I could see that in the anime. But hey, but budget and stuff and speeding through the East Blue Saga arc makes you understand why it couldn't be. But guys, I can definitely say they are confident they are going to get a season two here, especially with the post credit scene they gave us here. Yes, the post credit scene they gave us teases one one of the people who was usually in the East Blue Saga arc, but they decided to cut him out. That being Smoker makes a little brief appearance to show that if they do a season two, that's where we're going to see him. And mind you, I definitely can't wait to see that. If they go with the season two and they do Smoker, I would love to see how they are going to adapt his smoke smoke powers. That will be a challenge, but... I'll be there to see it. But either way, guys, if you have already seen it, let me know what your overall thoughts of it. Did you like it? Did you not like it? What, leave them all in the comment section down below. And like always, if you enjoy my videos, all you got to do is click that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon, and be notified when I make more videos. And until then, Make Geek Mixer, signing out. Bye!